The National Lampoon's Vacation series of movies has a pretty interesting trajectory. The first movie, written by John Hughes, was based on a short story he wrote about his own childhood vacation for National Lampoon magazine. The popularity of that story led to it being developed as a movie. It was a huge commercial success, kickstarting the film careers of both John Hughes and director Harold Ramis. A sequel followed in 1985, centering around the Griswolds winning a trip to Europe. Although it was also co-written by Hughes, it failed to live up to the same level of success as the first movie. Then, surprisingly enough, the third film, Christmas Vacation, would become a cultural phenomenon in its own right, with some fans even picking this as their favorite entry in the series. And when Santa squeezes his fat white ass down that chimney night, he's gonna find the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nuthouse. This movie even got its own direct-to-video sequel in 2003 that I'm bound to do a separate video on at some point. And then Vegas Vacation followed eight years later, losing both the National Lampoon moniker and any involvement from John Hughes. It was a critical and commercial failure, seemingly ending the main franchise. Until 18 years later. A reboot, simply titled Vacation, was first announced in 2014. Along with missing John Hughes and the National Lampoon title, the first trailers for this movie also seemed to suggest that it would be missing the charm, laughs, and memorable characters that made even the weaker films in the series memorable. And although that is typical for a lot of comedy franchise reboots, the Vacation series is one reboot that could have worked. The idea of a grown-up Rusty Griswold trying to capture the magic of his childhood by taking his own family to Wally World is a pretty good one. In theory. In execution, it just becomes a standard gross-out road trip comedy that wastes both its talented cast and its potential to reinvent the franchise as HBO Max is currently developing a new reboot that looks like it will retcon the events of this movie. And look, some people like this movie, I get it. But to those who think it actually holds a candle to the original, well... I think you're all fucked in the head. To talk about this movie, we first have to talk about Rusty Griswold a character who has been played by more actors than there are members of the Griswold family. He was first played by Anthony Michael Hall, and then Jason Lively, then Johnny Galecki, and lastly, Ethan Embry. Now, in the less popular vacation movies, European and Vegas Vacation, Rusty is portrayed as being basically a moron. Which is odd, because in those other two movies, he's portrayed as much more grounded, and as a real kid who's sometimes even wiser than his father. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? No. This is the Rusty I prefer. It adds dimension to Rusty's relationship with Clark, and adds a great balance to those movies. I think you might be overdoing it, Dad. The Rusty in this movie is sadly more like the former category, played here by Ed Helms, who's now an airline pilot. Listen to your parents. Sorry about that. <laughs> and somehow a pretty terrible person, both as a pilot and a father. There are a lot of boys who are born with vaginas. It's very hard for them. Honey, hmm? why, why? It's a teachable moment, hon. He has two sons now, with the younger one, Kevin, being a bully to his older brother, James. Ow. Don't say weird shit! Ow! Kevin, bullying! He's also trapped in a loveless marriage with his wife, Debbie, played by Christina Applegate. And together, they're both jealous of all the fun vacationing their friends have been doing. Which is my first big problem with this movie. The stakes are too high. In the original movie, Clark just wants to take his family on the perfect family vacation. He tries too hard, sure, but he's not trying to save his marriage, reclaim his manhood, force his kids to get along, or compete with his friends' vacations. He just wants to spend time with his family and give them the perfect vacation. The vacation being set up in this movie is designed to not only heal Rusty's marriage, but also help his kids get along better. Which really could be easily solved if the younger kid would stop being such an asshole. So, do you like school this year? That's seriously what you sound like, just shut up! Rusty also sets out to reconnect with his sister and parents, which we'll get to later. 
In that first movie, the Griswolds hit the road at 10 minutes into the movie. It sets up everything we need to know, and then the plot begins. The whole idea of a family vacation is to spend time together as a family. You get on an airplane, you put on your earphones, and you're lost in your own world. Here, it takes them 18 minutes before they even pull out of the driveway. What do they use that extra eight minutes for, you ask? Do it. Kind of fun. Slam it. Right. <laughs> there you go. Oh! oh my god! Oh! There's actually one scene early in the movie that I really like. It shows Rusty going through his old family vacation photos. It pulls at my nostalgia for the franchise. This should have been all the motivation he really needed. Maybe Rusty's just been too busy at work and feels like his family needs a proper vacation. I mean, that's all the motivation his dad ever needed. I see them two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening, maybe three hours on the weekend. Jeez. Why does this movie feel like it needs to pile so much onto the purpose behind their trip? There's this meta conversation that happens early in the movie that seems to be a staple now of a lot of comedy reboots, where characters acknowledge that they're making a reboot. So you just want to redo your vacation from 30 years ago? I mean, don't you think that's going to be kind of a letdown? Bingo. I guess it's supposed to justify the movie being different while also attempting to make a joke, but it just doesn't work for me. I've never even heard of the original vacation. Doesn't matter. The new vacation will stand on its own. <laughs> Actually, let's just talk about the jokes in this movie. That's the next problem that I have. All the attempts at humor in this movie fall into about five categories. Number one, inappropriate language used in casual conversation. Bonus points if it mentions a body part or function. <laughs> Pubic hair. I have to piss. Piss little shitty. I know you don't have a vagina. Pedophile. Rim job. A glory hole. Yes. Piece of ass. Focus on the balls. Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? For instance, there's one scene where Rusty goes to clean the tub at their first motel and mistakes a ball of pubic hair for a Brillo pad. It's a ball of pubic hair. Oh! Ah! Oh my god! There's so much of it! That's the joke. Rusty found a ball of pubic hair. Number two. Characters screaming or talking loudly is funny. Ah! Ah! Oh, shit! There's some bullshit right here! This seems to be a trap that a lot of modern comedies fall into, and I don't know why. Saying things loudly doesn't make dialogue any funnier. These two movies are all filled with things that are hard! Number three, Rusty being dumb is funny. That's it. Just a series of Rusty saying and doing things that no rational thinking human being would ever say or do. Hope you're not too old to let your dad give you a good night rim job. The point is, your mom and I would love you even if you were completely blank down there. Okay, that's not, this is not the point. I'm fond of when little boys' mouths get going in any way. I'm not suggesting that you are a sex offender. Andy plays guitar. Dream boy. <clears throat> Make a muscle. I do it. Rather not. Take your shirt off. Make a muscle. There's a running joke where his son keeps asking him about sex, and Rusty either doesn't know. Rim job. Country of origin. I don't know. Um, America? Can I hear it in a sentence? Or goes to explain, at which point his wife has to stop him. Hey, Dad, what's a pedophile? Hmm. Well, Kevin, when a man and a boy love each no. other very much... No. Okay, and while we're on Rusty, I need to talk about Ed Helms. I love him in supporting roles, but he's just not right for this role. It seems like when The Hangover became a huge hit, he started getting promoted to lead character in a lot of things. It happened on The Office. And again, I don't dislike the guy. I love him in films like Cedar Rapids, but here... He just plays it a tad too goofy, and lacks any self-awareness to make the character at all likable. No girlfriend? Cute boy like that, somebody's gonna snatch you up. Do you want me to call the cops? Rusty needs to be the grounded character here, especially if the movie was going to surround him with a wacky family. I would have much rather had someone like Jason Bateman in the role. Someone that can play calm yet frustrated so well. Making references to the first movie. And this one is the biggest crime. The movie actually makes a joke telling the audience what a different movie will be, 
and then it just continually bait and switches so many gags from the earlier movies. And lastly, the car. The amount of jokes they attempt to mine from the Griswold's car is endless. And plug in, I don't, I don't know what that is. I've never seen a, an outlet for that. The car in this movie does things that no car would ever do under penalty of mass lawsuits. Out. Honey, is that, is that a swastika on there? Yeah, we won't use that. Oh, yeah, Honey, it doesn't, it, it doesn't like when you no, touch it, do okay? Do it. Just, just it. leave it alone, let it calm down. <sighs> I mean, some cars don't even let you work the GPS when the car is moving. This one is just going to let the driver's seat turn completely around while driving. We get it. Modern cars are different. Move on. And again. Aside from this, the next big problem I have with this movie is misusing the Griswolds. On top of making Rusty the most unlikable character in the movie, Rusty's sister Audrey also has turned into a shell of a human, as well as her equally unlikable husband, played by Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, I remember that night. I'll never forget that night. No, neither will I, baby. You're my fucking husband. Oh, that's what I am. Mm. I'm a caveman. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna rip you in half. And then the cherry on top of this shit Sunday is bringing in Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo for a cameo sequence that's only in the movie so they could use it in the marketing. And although they only get about four minutes of screen time, it's just sad. When Grandpa Clark sees his grandkids for the first time, he picks them up and tries to carry them inside. It's funny, it's a very Clark Griswold thing to do. But then, for some reason, they have to cut to a double carrying the kids? It's just odd. Clark and Ellen are made out to be so unlikable as well. We're people, people. Hey guys, mind if we join you? We're occupied right now. Beat it. They now run a bed and breakfast, where all their guests hate them. Again, a fun idea, in theory. I talk about Chevy Chase a lot on this channel. I know he can be an acquired taste, but Clark Griswold has always been one of the most quotable, entertaining characters in film comedy to me. Waitress! A lot of it had to do with good writing, but part of it is also owed to Chevy, both in the physicality of the character and in him making him feel genuine. No matter how bad Clark screwed up, you always felt that his heart was in the right place. Here, a character that fans loved for decades is reduced to a glorified cameo. In fairness, the one laugh this movie got out of me is one of Clark's lines. A musician without his instrument is as bad as a shoemaker without a toilet seat. <laughs> and Clark gets another line in the next scene that makes you see what this movie could have been. The journey sucks. That's what makes you appreciate the destination. You had a dream to take your family to Wally World. Never let that go. I know I didn't. It's the one time in the movie these characters feel like real people. It brought me back to that scene in the first movie where Rusty and Clark share a beer. What that? We're gonna have fun. Imagine if this movie had been focused more on Clark and Rusty's relationship. Maybe it could have been more about Rusty reconnecting with his father, instead of trying to connect with his bland, annoying family characters. A movie that in the end is about Rusty coming to grips with all the perceived failures of his father, because he finally realizes how hard it is to be a dad himself. Nah, it's much better to watch the Griswolds get into a slow-mo fistfight with another family, right? That's the joke at the end, by the way. They make it to Wally World and beat up another family for cutting in line. What kind of a family are you? We're the Griswolds! See you around, you piece of ass! This is what makes this movie such a failure to me. It had the potential to do a great Passing of the Torch reboot, but they settled for a run-of-the-mill, crass road trip comedy. It falls in perfectly with other duds of the decade, like Dirty Grandpa. Which is tragic, because we're talking about the Griswolds here. Look, in essence, I don't blame the creative team here. The writing and directing duo would go on to helm Game Night, a critically acclaimed black comedy. And before this, they wrote horrible bosses. These guys know comedy. I just don't think they know the Griswolds. It's just, if you're gonna take characters that John Hughes created and put them in a new movie, I don't want said movie to contain a scene where a character scrubs out a bathtub with a ball of pubic hair. 
Actually, I don't want to see a ball of pubic hair at all. A lot of the humor in the first movie comes from taking those little family vacation moments we all had and exaggerating them for comedic effect. But here, can anyone relate to taking a bath in human waste with their family and exfoliating their skin with feces? If John Hughes taught us anything in creating the Griswolds, it's that real comedy comes from characters that feel like real people, whereas flat, uninspired characters lead to comedy that's just that. As I said, it appears that this reboot is already being retconned, as supposedly HBO Max is developing a Griswolds TV project, with Johnny Galecki set to reprise his role as Rusty, as well as executive produce. So with any luck, this forgettable, messy chapter of the Griswold family will continue to be forgotten.